Today, we will review an Abasi Concepts Lorada Master Series 8. This review is not sponsored. I will cover as many practical aspects as I can, including how it feels to play, the quality of construction, and how it sounds. Quick verdict. If you don't have time for the whole review, the TLDR is, it's really good. It's my best playing extended range guitar. It'll never be as comfortable or as easy as a six string, but it's higher quality and easier to play than almost all of the six string guitars I've owned and tried. And it sounds great too. It's an amazingly satisfying guitar to play and I reach for it first every time. If you would like to support more unsponsored reviews and music, please consider making a small donation on my Patreon. Any contribution is deeply appreciated and makes further videos possible. If that's not possible, leaving a comment below and telling me what you think helps. I enjoy hearing from you, and the feedback is invaluable. Thanks! Background. Now, before we begin, here's some background to identify the lens that this review is colored by at the circumstances of purchase. You may know me mostly from my covers here on YouTube. I arrange and record these on my own. Throughout the years, I've played in a few local metal bands and have participated in jam sessions ranging from laid-back blues to wacky experimental hard rock to metalcore. Extended range guitars with extra strings are appealing as they cover a wide range without sacrificing too much of the higher notes or treading too far into unfamiliar tuning territory. You won't have to worry about covering a song that goes down to a low B when your guitar only goes to a low C, when you have an added string or two. I've used downtuned seven strings in several of my songs previously, so when the money was right and one was in stock, I had to pick up an eight-stringed Lorada. I'm making this review now to answer the questions that I had before buying so that the future buyers won't have to take a leap of faith Check out the timestamps in the description for any specific subjects you're looking for. Section 1. Quality and Design Starting with how well it holds its tuning, it's overall great in the stability department. This is probably due to the roasted maple neck and quality tuners and nut material. The neck in particular is very stable in relation to temperature and minor string gauge changes. Tuning is required only every several days with light to moderate playing, given I practice several hours a day. I have not subjected it to temperature changes that would warp wood or crack finish, but it survived the wacky climate control of my apartment. In a band setting, or under more vigorous playing, it needs to be retuned every uh, three to five songs, with strings just starting to fall out of tune outside of the green zone on a tuner. For reference, I usually have to tune every two songs on other guitars, and will tune after every song if a moment to do so presents itself. The volume knob is in the perfect position, I think. It isn't in the way and can't be accidentally turned, and it's easily reachable. I'm so glad this doesn't come with a tone knob. Why do guitars still come with a tone knob? Who uses a tone knob? Are you f there are a few misses in quality though. While the wood quality and fretwork are excellent, the switch is kind of jank. Switching into the bridge position has the switch blade contacting the body wood, and there's a lot of give for position two, the position right before position one, where you need to flick the switch all the way to the edge to get into position one. The other pickup positions are just fine. When I opened the pickup cavity, I noticed it was like kind of dirty with some little bits of random sawdust and standard dust here and there. This could be a common thing since I also have a Master uh, 6 and it has the same squalor. And it actually needed um, the bridge position contacts cleaned by flicking the switch to and from the first position about 30 times until it worked properly. I've had no problems with this Lorada 8 as of making this video, and the 6 has been okay so far. The guitar comes equipped with a Fishman battery pack. The first time I tried to plug in the charging cable, the sticky side of the battery pack failed and it fell into the control cavity. I had to take off the back plate and re-secure the pack back on. Nothing was damaged. 
but it's a bummer how weak the seal is. I'll go back and reinforce the hold with either tape or glue the next time I have to charge it, which is actually very rarely. This thing lasts a million hours, and I only charged it since I was going to an all-day jam session after having owned it for a few months. The paint isn't masked off in a laser-perfect way around the neck either, but unless you put your eyes up next to it, you'll never notice. People have complimented the champagne gold color and the sleek lines of the guitar. Even without knowing anything about guitars, what this one is, or what Tosin means to the guitar community. Section 2. Playability. Moving on to playability now. This guitar is lightweight and well balanced, which makes it possible to play standing up for 5 hours, after which I stopped to go eat. You can feel the spirit of the Ibanez S series in this. The body is very thin where it interfaces with the human body, and the bridge is further back, leading to a compact design. It makes other guitars feel like shoeboxes, which is insane since it's an 8-stringed leviathan. Standing up is the best way to play this, with thumb behind the neck form. It actually has helped my posture and playing technique. The neck is a fantastic thin C shape, so it feels instantly familiar and not like a surfboard or a 2x4. Of the Laradas I own, the Master Series ones have the most comfortable necks, with the Space T having a more vintage thick profile and the Legion having a flat um, D or U shape, not unlike the LTD Stefan Carpenter model that I used to own. The compound radius feels perfect, and you definitely notice it's missing when you go back to playing other guitars. Marketing for compound or conical radii often states the low frets are for cording and the higher for shredding, but the reality is you can do all of the above all up the neck. It's worth noting there was no oiled finish on the neck as far as I could tell. But this is a non-issue for me since I just played it until my thumb, over time, oiled the back of the neck. It felt great then, and it feels great now. This guitar came set up with super low action, and even after I changed the strings from 9.5s to 9s, it's still very low action with just a slight adjustment of the truss rod. It took about an eighth of a turn looser, but I did this out of habit from years of setting up guitars and haven't tried setting the neck back. The frets are stainless steel and have that signature steel slickness. The treated maple fretboard offers some slight resistance under the fingers. So not as much as rosewood, but mm, not slippery like ebony or rich light. I'd say it's closer to the latter and you won't notice any obstruction after two minutes of warming up. For reference, a lacquered fender neck takes me 10 to 15 minutes of warm up, and even then my fingers have the chance to stick to the lacquer and trip over themselves. The multi-scale frets feel natural, and it did not take me long to become perfectly accustomed to them. This is probably due to the eight strings requiring a wider neck, allowing the transition between scale lengths to be more gradual. I also have a Legion 7, which covers the same scale lengths, but over a shorter distance, and that guitar took longer to get used to. The body itself has clever contours that blend into your body no matter how you sit or stand. You can even easily sit and play Rick Beato style with the neck pointing to the sky. The back of the neck also has a huge cutaway, allowing your thumb unimpeded access. Your hand can slide all the way up. It's hard to go back to anything else. The misses in playability here are pretty obvious, but are acceptable. You clearly can't put your thumb over the neck past the 12th fret. So no John Mayer or Hendrix style tricks here. Although the neck is wide enough that you realistically never end up doing this anywhere on the neck and the section of the neck in the body is thicker at the base end to give your thumb more bracing for when you do need to bend. Still, this does make bends technically more difficult and I went down from the 9.5s it came with to 9s, which are what I typically use for standard tuning. Although I was able to play the 9.5s through their full life. As a side note, the 6-string Loradas came with 10s and I had to immediately switch them to 9s 
to be able to bend like normal. It's also worth noting that while this guitar plays better than any other extended range guitar and the vast majority of six string guitars I've played, it will still never truly be as comfortable or as forgiving as a six. Final note, the switch being parallel to the strings feels odd. I prefer the strat style blade switch that's angled in a way that's optimized for the flicking motion. As it is, the parallel switch is at an unnatural angle and while it's usable, it's not intuitive. It does ensure you never accidentally switch it, but it does introduce the possibility of accidentally not switching it. Section three, sound. Okay, I really like how this thing sounds. <laughs> <laughs> this thing has been demonstrated to do the modern metal dealio. <laughs> However, the pickups are darker voiced than you may expect. Plenty of mids and low end, and they took advantage of how much control the Fishman pickups have over their own frequency response to deliver all the usable frequencies you need, and less of what you don't. And not to say you won't need a good signal chain for jaunty modern fun, but it's proven to be very easy to get the toast and signature pickups to sound good in a mix. I do like upper mid emphasis, but not quite to the extent that some more modern metal tones stress it. I appreciate the fullness and thickness while still being able to gent. The pickups also do cleans, blues, rock, and more very well. I had to go to folk rock band practice with only a Lion 6 Helix Stomp and three pedals. And surprisingly, this eight string beast sounded the best for the cleans and rock flavored gain tones required. So I used this guitar over all others in my collection. Another plus is the single coil split. It gives a fantastically usable thin single coil sound that will save you from having to bring another guitar to the show. They won't get you the Stratocaster neck tone though. It's more of an option if you just need a generic single coil-ish tone. Playing low down on the low strings with the split bridge setting of position two and high gain nails that aggressive thin modern thing flawlessly that many guys use it's not my thing but it's a thing in terms of recording the active voicing fits into mixes very well especially for rhythm i do use a multi-band compressor to tame palm mutes between 100 and 200 hertz when recording however this is more of a standard thing that should be done in general for metal palm mutes unless any fault of this guitar a note on actives, they do pick up minute mistakes and muting technique errors more than passive pickup equipped guitars do. So I do have to be a little more on top of things when playing this guitar or any guitar with actives. However, if you're playing in a live setting and you flub a note by either missing with your pick or not hitting hard enough, they'll provide the power you need to make up for it. The audience won't be any the wiser. You may have to turn down the gain on your amp slightly, but now this pedantic video is turning into a lecture on active pickup usage. Anyway, the passive voicing is utterly useless. <laughs> To my ears, the active voicing is far more useful in terms of fitting into any band setting. And when playing on your own, the passive voicing is a novelty at best. Whenever I need a passive pickup sound, I pick up one of my Ibanez guitars. Still not sponsored. <laughs> Section 4. Usage. Real life experiences. Sitting around at home noodling is fun, 
but you won't truly know a guitar until you put it through its paces. So here's how the Lorada Master Series 8 has held up after a few months of real world use. I brought this guitar to a folk rock band practice and jam. I did sneak in some usage of the lower two strings, but in general the songs were standard tuning oriented and more simple. The guitar was possible to use in this context. I was only visiting and I did not know any of the songs, so I had to learn them on the spot. There were several times where the 8th and 7th strings would confuse me in the heat of the moment, especially since I would look at other band members for cues and would goof off. Overall, as long as I held some semblance of focus and thought about what I was playing, I would be okay. I think this wouldn't be an issue if an 8th string was the only shade of guitar I used. I frequently play six strings and seven strings, so some adaptation is required. In the jam breaks, things were easier to manage. I could pull upon my practiced bag of tricks, and the guitar did not obstruct my playing. If anything, the playability helped it. Uh, in terms of live shows, I have not yet played any live shows with this. Recording with this guitar is pretty straightforward. It was very easy to use and took minor tweaks to make a few presets that would complement this guitar. Tracking with it was nice, however I found myself wanting to stand up and play more technical things like lead lines. For simpler, chunky rhythm work, sitting down standard style was just fine. And of course, it's always nice not having to worry about tuning lower, since you have every note down to minus Q. Can you play six string songs on an eight string like this? The most clear answer I can give is it depends. Techniques that require there only being six strings on the guitar neck and alternate tunings are two immediate blockers. You can't wrap your thumb around the neck to fret notes on the sixth string, for example, and some songs that take advantage of an alternate tunings, open strings, or shapes are also much more difficult, if not impossible, on an eight string even if the notes are available. Sure, you could in theory play in dying days on this, but with the added difficulty, what's the point? You'll be suffering and making more unnecessary mistakes playing a harder version of the same song. Especially if you plan on performing, things would go much better if you made things easier for yourself. Is it possible to play seven string stuff on an eight string like this? Same answer as above. The way I use a 7 string relies less on open strings and more on having the extended range. So in my case, yes, I can play all my own songs on the 8 string, whether they're in 6 string drop C or 7 string A standard. Overall, this is a terrific instrument that will help you play your own style of music. There's a feeling of open freedom you get when your note choice is not limited by the 6th string. Your creativity expands to fill the new space given to you. I never feel like I have to play any Animals as Leaders songs when I pick up and use this guitar. Instead, it's always felt like the perfect tool for me to continue to create and perform my own stuff. I did, of course, learn to thump for fun. Section 5. Conclusion Could this be an only guitar? Based on everything I just mentioned, I conclude that this guitar is a powerful supplement to your collection. Yes, in that you can bring it to practice or a show and get away with it as your sole instrument. Yes, if your musical projects cover a diverse set of genres, but overall, no. And that's because the E string guitar, while potentially versatile, is still more of a fringe instrument. The best way to think about it is as six string guitars and eight string guitars being separate instruments even though there's a lot of overlap unless you're getting into guitar playing for the sole purpose of playing in a project that requires eight strings the eight string guitar should be a supplement to one stable of guitars is the master series eight good 100 percent. and at this point i would need another one if anything happened to mine it's already seeped into my playing and writing, and the ergos put everything else to shame. I would say, if you have the cash, and one is available, and you're considering one, go for it. Do you want more reviews on other Abasi or Ibanez guitars I own? Let me know in the comments. 
and be sure to subscribe for more. I'm also duly obligated to tell you to smash that like button. Now go practice.